back to the Slow Flower Show with Deborah Prinzing. This is episode 520. This is the weekly show about slow flowers and the people who grow and design with them. It's all about making a conscious choice, and I invite you to join the conversation and the creative community as we discuss the vital topics of saving our domestic flower farms and supporting a floral industry that relies on a safe, seasonal, and local supply of flowers and foliage. This show is brought to you by slowflowers.com, the free online directory to more than 880 florists, shops, and studios who design with local, seasonal, and sustainable flowers, and to the farms that grow those blooms. It's the conscious choice for buying and sending flowers. In celebration of our Slow Flowers podcast's eighth anniversary, we launched our new live stream video format called The Slow Flowers Show with the goal of sharing the faces and voices of our members, as well as tours of their farms, their shops and studios, and most of all, their flowers. I'll share our sponsor thank yous at the end of today's episode. So let's jump right in and get started. Hello, Chris Bennett. Good morning. Today we are going live with longtime Slow Flowers member Chris Bennett of Chrysanthemums, a full service floral design studio that just happens to be situated at Bennett Botanical Gardens, Chris's five acre garden and wedding venue in Eastern Oregon. I finally placed Hermiston on the map, Chris. It's close to Walla Walla in Washington and Pendleton in Oregon. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I, you're right on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a beautiful place in the Pacific Northwest. So, Chris has recorded a video tour of Bennett Botanical Gardens that we're going to share first. She recorded it yesterday. And then we'll come back and talk with Chris in her design studio and see her create an arrangement while we uh, finish the interview. So right now, we're going to put on uh, this wonderful video and uh, it goes for about nine minutes and enjoy the tour. Good morning. My name is Chris and I have chrysanthemums in Bennett Gardens. I'm walking through the gardens this morning to show you what we have, how I use it, and what it's like in Eastern Oregon. These are Helen Von Stein lamb's ear. I love to use them in boutonnieres, corsages, vase arrangements, bouquets. Um, They're one of my favorite and I could always use more. It's a windy, breezy day today, but we're all very thankful for that. We've had a really warm summer. It's been over 100 and it was 106, 107 last week, 117 has been our warmest day this summer, and um, I'll take this breeze and this cool temperatures over anything. We use the gardens for weddings and events, uh, business meetings, luncheons, those kinds of things, and uh, I should have mowed for this picture so everything was perfect, but nothing is ever perfect in a garden. We usually um, do that for the gardens on a Thursday because usually our events, they start setting up on Friday. So we're just trying, last year we added some color um, in different spots in the gardens. There are some bananas my husband planted and he likes those and we'll probably put them in the greenhouse. I have a lot of roses that I use. We have um, some beautiful blue globe thistle back here if you can see them. I use those a lot. So everything I use is kind of planted in the landscape so that It looks nice in the landscape if I use it. If I don't, it can grow and just be beautiful. We do have a lot of pollinators. We have a lot of doves. We have a lot of um, quail. So there's a lot of nature in the gardens. We have been here for over 30 years now. Uh, We didn't intend to have weddings in our gardens or events, but my daughter got married here 16 years ago this fall. And so we, after that, people stopped and said, oh, can we get married here? And we said, oh, okay, we never thought about that. And then it just kind of increased since then. These are uh, some Lichondra that are on a hay conveyor that look really nice up there. Um, I love them. I love the way they, you know, the Silver Falls Trail. I also love the way that this, uh, you can see from a distance, the color. I'll be planting more of that next year. It is um, Surefire Begonia, and I'll be using a lot of that. We have five acres here, um, which we live on. We have a rental on it as well, and um, we take care of it all ourselves. Um, One thing I'm using a lot of right now, just because it is so 
nice and hasn't popped yet is Sedum Autumn Joy. And so I use a lot of that in designs. And um, we have an old antique grain silo over here that we have our restroom facilities in for our guests, hand washes and restrooms. We run water here every day. We get less than 10 inches of rain a year in Eastern Oregon. Our elevation is like a little around 500 feet. And we're close three miles to the Columbia River. We are close to um, hiking and in the winter, lots of snowmobiling, skiing, those kinds of things. Um, you can see that the water is just starting to turn off. And I wanted to show you this area over here. This is a pathway. We took the pavers that we had at the entrance and reused them, moved them here. We had these arches here always and everybody always loved it. But now it's really a favorite spot for pictures, for people to walk through to meet for a ceremony, or a lot of times we'll serve food down in that long, narrow area. And so this is an entrance to that. But again, here are those surefire begonias that look beautiful. And I definitely will be using a lot more of those next year. We have a horrible time with the budworm that eats the blooms off of petunias here. And about two weeks ago is when they started coming in. And if I didn't spray every week, they wouldn't have blooms. And you can see an example of that right here on these towers. They were beautiful white, full of petunias and the budworm has completely devastated them. And so those pots will be coming down. We have replacements to hang up. And then we have this gorgeous helianthus here at the base. We've had it here for a really long time. We just print it down and it's always a welcome like curve when people walk in. We have um, some beautiful at last roses here. You know, there's always something to be done in the gardens. So these clearly need some pruning. And here is Jimmy. He is our kitty that just showed up and so he now belongs in the gardens. The entrance here to the gardens has been redone this spring. We, um, it used to be beams and posts and it kind of wasn't centered. And so we have been talking about it for a few years. And so my husband put in the paver pathway and these beautiful concrete stone pillars and bowls or urns and in those I have Vinca and Vinca does really well here because of our heat and so I like to use those. We um, had these lights made. The high school um, metal shop kids made these and I think they turned out really well. Um, they have a sensor in them so they come on in the evening and go off in the morning and I think they turned out very nicely. So out here is our parking area. Um, it is quite large. Um, everybody parks on the grass. We just mow it. We don't bag it. We don't really fertilize it much. It does really well. Two years ago, we planted trees out here just because people kind of need to know where and how to park. That seems to be an issue, especially for a larger group. And then here is our greenhouse where we raise hanging baskets. Um, and we'll walk in there in a minute just put this um, hedge of beach here rather than building a fence because wood was so expensive and we had these bare root beach and so I think they're going to be a really nice like just small privacy hedge here at the end of the greenhouse. So let's walk back here now. I really want to show you my olive trees which are one of my favorites. The pots are one of my favorites too. We got the olives as plugs and started them and then put them in the greenhouse in the winter, use them for accents in the summer, and I use them for bouquets. A lot of our stonework is from Unique Stone in North Carolina. Um, we re really like their product, and uh, the only downside is it has to be shipped by truck, and that gets to be sometimes slow, and sometimes another area here. We have a fire pit that people can um, use to make s'mores bars, in the back back here uh, over here we have um, that's the room where the bride and the bridesmaids can get ready in and next year we will be trying to do something for the guys to get ready in so here are the olive trees and 
you can see how beautiful they look. They are gorgeous. And um, I trim off of them and use them a lot. They're very happy here. You can see the little olives. And um, we really like them out here. Now here's some more, um, some hanging baskets that I had that were extras and just put down here at the end of the greenhouse. And then if we walk in the greenhouse, we've got, my husband has citrus, lemons, limes, um, and uh, other things. And yeah, we've been eating them and uh, they do really well in here. This is the hanging baskets that we raise. We, these were bought for our county fair last week. We brought them back here um, to water, trim up, and the local supporter who purchased them is giving them away at his auto dealership. So we brought him home to take care of him longer and he will pick them up and take them to whoever they're giving them to. We want to take the hangers off and hang on to those. Down here, I wanted to show you my eucalyptus. So we planted this eucalyptus again in the plug size when we originally got it a few years ago. And it really likes where it is. I use it a lot in bouquets and design work. It does really well here. And so I really don't want to move it. I almost wish I could just dig down and plant it in the greenhouse and leave it here. But it does really well. Um, so we do have some things that aren't maybe able to survive the winter here, but we do keep the greenhouse just above freezing just for the tender crops that we have here. So that was just kind of a quick tour, walking through the gardens. I'm sure I skip things or you saw weeds, but it's always a work in progress and hope you enjoyed it. That was so much fun, Chris. Thank you for taking the time to walk us through your world. And um, now we're gonna be live in your studio. So I'm I'm excited to ask you lots of questions. Do you want to add anything about your property before we get started? Um, I um, know how- well, I, I think the only thing I really want to add is the only, everything has been planted there by us. So there's like three or four giant cottonwood trees that are what, 100 feet tall or more. Um, and they were there on the property when we came, but everything else has been planted, so. Wow. Wow. Um, Chris, as you said it's five acres. How right. long have you, how long have you lived there? You know, it sounds um, like you and your husband. For, yeah. Over 30 years. Um, we grew up, my husband grew up ranching, farming. And when I got married, that's where we lived. And then we bought this property and moved here. Wow. And have, you know, it kind of call, calling it Bennett Botanical Gardens, implies that it's like open to the public but or that there's a nursery there so describe it as how you use it as a business is it just a venue um no so it is been at botanical gardens mainly because my husband tries out so many new plants um whether it's conifers you know anything he's got a really good friend that raises conifers and they'll you know come and get um things or give him things to say hey try this see if it'll survive and so that's where the botanical part came um, the gardens are open to the public by appointment. Um, we do not charge. Um, and a lot of, you know, organizations travel to come and just go through the gardens or maybe stay and have lunch. Or we do a lot of photos in the gardens, which we don't charge for unless they want to book the whole gardens out, you know, for the whole day. Wow. But people come and take, you know, like senior photos or family photos, or we just want to be able to share it with everyone. Wow, it's such a gift to the community because, um, you know, I would also say that Eastern Washington or excuse me, Eastern Oregon is always sort of seen as this like high desert area. And then I look at the video you shared and it's so lush and, you know, just really it doesn't look dried out and like parched from the summer. So is that mainly because of irrigation or just the, the way that you take care of your plants? Well, both. Um, yes, if you drive down the road and people drive in and they go, oh, we had no idea this place was here because everything around us, you know, is dry, you know, sagebrush, tumbleweeds, all that kind of, you know, good farmland for those kind of crops like watermelons, potatoes, all that asparagus. Um, but yeah, we do have irrigation water through the ditch company that we pay for every year. Um, we do have a lot of things on drip irrigation. And so that's, you know, an allotment that we pay for and that we use. And so that's how we water everything. 
um, you know, my husband's a landscaper and arborist, and so he clearly understands all of that. So, you know, we water at specific times of the night, you know, to save water or shut it off if it's windy, you know, all those kinds of things. So we're smart with the water because water is our lifeline here in Eastern Oregon. Wow. What a complimentary couple you are. Um, I want you to give, uh, you're going to do a little design for us, but bef- can you design and talk at the same time? <laughs> Oh, sure. I can walk and talk. Yeah, I can do that. (laughs) I am going to, I'm going to try to make your screen bigger. Oop, that's not going to work. I think we're going to have to maybe, um, I don't know how to make my, I'm going to just enlarge you and see if I can, can you still hear me if I? Um, uh, Now I think my head's cut off. (laughs) Is Okay, so Chris, when I close off my video, you can't hear me. So we're going to have to do it like this for a while. And that's fine. That, okay. I don't need to be full screen. That's good. <laughs> we're good. At least we're both we're upright and horizontal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, while I want to ask a little bit about your studio, and then we'll, we'll talk about your business. So you're, you, I okay. saw on your bio, it's a 750 square foot uh, studio. It's, it's just steps from your garden and home, right? Right. I mean, I can start laundry and walk out and walk back. And, you know, that's a good and a bad thing. But for me, I look at it as a positive thing. Um, I probably spend more time in here than I do in the house. So I probably need to hire a housekeeper. But, you know, um, <laughs> this is I where you'd rather here. be. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather be here. You know, this is where I enjoy it. So, yeah. So um, how your business, your floral design business is chrysanthemums, which is a Correct. very cute play on your first name. Um, I called you a full service floral design studio because I know you do weddings and events, but you also were telling me that you're doing all kinds of, um, just local everyday, uh, orders that are coming through. And so, right. I, it started out, you know, a friend of mine said, Oh, can you do a bridal bouquet for my daughter's wedding? And I'm like, well, sure. I've always loved flowers. I've worked with them, you know? Um, and so I did, and then it was just word of mouth, you know? And then after that, it just started being, Oh, can you make one for a birthday or, so yeah, now, I mean, I do daily deliveries, local deliveries, people, I make arrangements, people pick them up and travel with them. I do wow. destination weddings. So I'm kind of, yeah, I do sympathy designs, local, you know, celebrations. Right. And and it, you, you kind of have, it's interesting, I was really chuckling at your bio because you talked about <laughs> working at a flower shop when you were a teenager, right. going, and then going to horticulture school, and then relaunching your floral career later after that. So give us kind of a, a little explanation of this crazy journey you had. You've never not had flowers in your hand. No, I mean, I grew up in Tacoma um, and I was in 4-H. And so I was always in, you know, agriculture and of things. And then, um, and I told you the other day, and I hate to say this, but it helps with the flower thing. I was the daffodil princess in my high school. It's kind of like the Rose Festival in Portland, you know, or Pasadena, that Chris, kind of thing. Chris, I was a rose princess in Portland, so we have that in common. <laughs> well, I, I have pictures, but they're not out, you know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so that was part of the journey, you know. Um, and then I worked at a floral shop in high school. And then I met my husband, you know, before I married him. And he was in Hermiston. And the, so the closest college I could find to Hermiston was WSU. And so, hey, that's where I want went. You know, I did egg econ there and then got married and moved to Eastern Oregon. Mm-hmm. So what, for a while, were you just working on the in the family landscape business before you sort of launched chrysanthemums or? Well, you know, we lived on the family ranch. You know, it was a registered Hereford ranch. We had sales and we sold cattle. We showed cattle all over the Northwest. Um, and then after a while, things changed and um, we moved and my husband went to work for the city and took care of all the parks and develop the parks in our local town because there wasn't a parks department. And we moved out on two acres with our kids and he got his landscape license. And so, yeah, we just start, we brought some cows with us and they got out at the fences. And as they got out, my husband said, they're gone. And then, you know, the fence went further and the landscaping took place. I love it. That's great. So when you were at WSU, did you take any floriculture courses or did they even yes. have them? Yeah, I did. I took floriculture classes and um, horticulture classes, ag classes while I was there. Um, you know, because my husband and I were, you know, kind of the agriculture cow, you know, showing cattle thing. I, you know, I did like the judging team and, you know, meats and all that kind of stuff. But I think, you know, agriculture all ties us to the land. And so right, right. flowers aren't far from growing crops or growing, raising animals. So, right. 
Right. Well, what are you going to design for us today? I, I know um, that you draw a lot of your ingredients just from that beautiful landscape we just saw. Right. And that's actually what I did this morning. I made sure everything I have here, except for one thing, is um, out of the gardens. Um, I like to use glass vases. To me, they're a great way to recycle, reuse. Um, plastic's not my friend. I've never really liked plastic. Uh -huh. um, and so I like to use glass. Um, one of the first things I learned when I started is I would go to the Portland flower market and I took every class that all those, um, you know, Frank Adams and yeah, the wholesalers. All yeah. Right. All of them took offered. And so I would drive the three hours. I would take the classes they offered and I learned about armature. I learned, you know, every, and back then it wasn't online classes. You know, so it was I would drive. And then uh, for a long time, I drove back and forth to Portland to the flower market to get my product just to have for weddings and events. Wow. So every week I would drive until, you know, the wholesalers then started delivering here for like $15. And my, I'm a happy girl because I don't have to make that six hour drive. That's a whole day. That's crazy. Oh, and then come back and then, yeah. And so when I first started, though, I knew that I had to educate myself. I knew I had to take classes because, I mean... I wasn't an expert at it. And so the first big class that I took, I took a class from Paula Pryke at the San Francisco Flower Market. And I left the Tri-Cities, which is like 45 minutes away at like four in the morning. I flew to San Francisco. I took BART. I walked. I got to the flower market. I took a class from Paula Pryke. And that was one of my favorite classes I have ever taken to this day. Um, I took the class from her, made the bouquet. She showed us how, you know, they do in Europe where they wrap them in paper and or in plastic tissue, you know, and the water's mm -hmm. in the bottom. I dumped the water out in the airport, carried it under my seat, got home at like midnight that night. Oh um, my gosh. But it was great. I mean, because if you don't educate yourself and learn, that's kind of what keeps us going, I think. I think that's so smart. I mean, you've, you've studied with a lot of people. I, I, in addition to Paula Pryke, you've studied with Ariella Shazar, Max Gill, David Beam, Amy Osaba, right. Alicia Sweetie, Francoise Weeks, Holly right. Chapel. Like you're you're right. willing you're not letting your sort of isolation in a smaller town keep you from from educating yourself. No, and that's kind of what I had to do because I knew if I didn't do that, I was gonna be in trouble. You mm -hmm. know, because you can't nothing stays the same or you don't stay on top of your game if you don't, you know, educate yourself. Um the last, um, I've taken some online classes from um, Allison Ellis, and I really mm -hmm. love her. I think she is great. Yep, um, she's a Slip so Flowers I, member too, and I love her um, kind of business focus, which is also something that right. is, you have to educate yourself on. Oh, clearly. I mean, clearly my college helped, you know, the egg econ, but until you get your hands in and start working, it's a whole different game. But yeah, she was great. The last, um, then I've been to like the Floor Abundance Design Days in Santa Barbara. That was great. You know, took my husband. It was nice to go for a few days. Um, the last class I've taken that I really, really enjoyed was um, just a couple of years ago with Joseph Massey. And we learned the, you know, the 358 thing yeah. and all of that that they teach in Europe, which, you know, and that really resonated with me. Now when I make my bridal case, I make it out of the 12 wire and, you know, fold and do the whole process. It has changed my bridal bouquet game. Oh my Just gosh. Just using that armature. It is to, so worth it. But yeah, wow. so he is a, he's a, been a, that was a great resource. Yeah, yeah, he's great. I had him on the podcast when he was teaching at the Whidbey Flower Workshop uh, three or four years ago. Uh, Chris, uh -huh. we're going to post this, uh, sh this episode uh, at deborahprinzing.com next week so maybe okay. i can get a few photos of some of those bouquets you're talking about uh that you okay. can share because I'd, I'd love okay. to show that okay who so is your what go ahead let me tell you what i'm working with yeah or... yeah and then i'll i'll hold my questions <laughs> okay okay so um i had to have my husband give me names because he's the you know plant person with names yeah so this is katinas witchcraft it's gorgeous um we've got uh that's okay then i've got hiscanthus um, over, this is, uh, Carl yeah, Forrester. I've got some his, miscanthus right here that I'm going to use. And then I've got some helium sneeze wart, Mardi Gras. that oh. was really pretty in the gardens. Oh, and wow. then I do have, I harvested some apples off of an espaliered apple tree that we have. Oh my gosh. Um, some echinacea. Uh, here's my blue thistle that, you know, I harvested out of the gardens. Um, and I've got some sunflowers. These are the part from the Portland flower market. So I still try and keep, you know, support local, um, even though it's three hours away from me. But I know that, you know, a local farmer grew this in the area. Yeah. And so I'm going to use those. So I will just keep going and you can ask me questions and 
I'll ramble while you. I'd love ask it. Me. Well, first of all, that katinas, that smoke bush color is so. It's almost like turquoise. It's so teal. Uh, it's it's definitely a landscape plant, right? Right, and it, you know we have it in green too. But please don't ask me what the variety name is in green. No, but no, he but said, "Did you pick any green?" I'm like, "No, nah, I just got this." I just your this color. your sedum is your green. Right. And you right. were telling me how much, how, how much, uh, how popular that is as green early in the season because, right. you know, people don't really know what it is. No. And um, I think what I told you is my husband's on the fair board last week. They asked, oh, we need 12 centerpieces for a VIP tent. I'm like, oh, great. As I'm walking through 107 degree weather and looking at everybody's, you know, little mason jars of sunflowers that are drooping. And I'm like, I can't do that. They're going to be out there for four nights. So I just went into the gardens. I cut sedum, I folded a leaf, I put it in a jar, and you know what? They held up for four nights. It was 107. You know, it worked out really good. Everybody thought it was fabulous. They thought they were, you know, a succulent, and, you know, it was great. Yeah, that's cool. They held up. I love they it. were, you know, nice and cheery. They didn't droop. Yeah. It makes me want to, I, I have two and a half plants. I have two sedum autumn joys and one that's kind of like, almost dead so it makes me want to plant more because you have a mass of it in your garden and uh oh i i would say we probably have 50 or 60 plants of them you know but we've got five acres and we have you know landscape shrub beds in our rental as well and so that's exactly what we're doing you know we still have some shrub beds to fill in there and i would like to you know we don't really do rows of things my husband's not a row person Mm -hmm. um and so i would every time we see something or i'm like oh we need to plant this and he's like okay we'll put it over here so yeah so it's all integrated into the borders and beds it's not a production not a farm you don't have a farm well i would not i would love to have it in rows i'm more of a row walk down a clean row cut your flowers bring them in but you know i guess it's an adventure to walk through the garden see what's blooming (laughs) You know, and just pick and choose from that because every day something is different. Uh, you know what you, um, I think I saw you, you talked about using a clear glass face, but I think I saw you put some curly willow in for the mechanic. Yes, uh, mechanic? I had that okay. in first and that is um, from the gardens as well. Um, I like to twirl it or make it into a loop. So I'm using that for my armature. Mm-hmm. So I don't, when I, I will say when I first started, I used floral foam. And I don't know, maybe, but just for me, I think with my inexperience when I first started, to me, that made me feel secure. But I rare, I, the only time I use it now is for like on arches, if I'm doing like, um, because I can't do an arch arrangement for a wedding. Usually I have to do it four or five hours in advance. And at the 106 degrees, if I did it in chicken wire, I'd really have a hard time. Um, unless, unless you did it with that sedum, maybe it, well, you should try one. <laughs> Well, I would love to do this bridal bouquet with that. But I mean, you know, I still, I, so I really don't use that. And the armature, I think the classes I took, you know, early on really helped me. You know, one class I took, they said, if you can throw the wrist corsage that you make across the room, it should stay together. Yeah. Or, you know, you should be able to, you know, basically drop your vase and everything. So I really focus on that because I do have to deliver and travel. I travel anywhere from, you know, I can go 50, 60 miles for deliveries. Do or you have? Go, oh, go ahead. Do you have air conditioning or a, or a um, swamp cooler I have in a your? Walk, I have a walk-in cooler, um, and that has been really great. Um, a good friend of mine is a refrigeration guy, and he um, helped me get that. I didn't have it for a long time. I just had like everybody, you know, one of the pop coolers until it froze my flowers for a wedding one day. Oh my goodness! And then um, we got this. It's not big. It's like eight by eight or eight by ten. Um, and then I do. We just put in um, mini split air conditioners in the studio um, last year because my little window mount, you know, couldn't handle 117. Um, In my car, I have, um, I have a van and it is, uh, I have insulated it, you know, it's because it was a cargo van and I've insulated the ceiling and stuff and it holds stuff really well. So I really don't have any trouble with, you know, holding stuff for you and you kind of learn you know, what's going to hold up and what isn't and, you know, what you need to really miss really well. And right. Right. I mean, you're a veteran. Can we talk about the time recently I was driving down I-5 in Seattle and I drove past a van, sure. a truck that said chrysanthemums? Oh, sure. That's a, that, that I bring that up a lot to my daughter. So, um, so I rolled down so, the window and tried to gesture to the people in the van and they, I'm like, I, I'm a friend of Chris's and she's like, I'm her daughter. <laughs> Okay, so that story goes, um, so 
my son-in-law is the one who came up with the name chrysanthemums. Um, both him and my daughter are very creative entrepreneurs, um, you know, new adventures, all those kinds of things. And so we had had the flower trailer. He had had it, wasn't using it. He said, you need to take it and use it. So we used it here for a long time. And then I had my van and I'm like, I don't really need it anymore. And they, they actually, um, like I said, they moved to Vashon Island and they have a mini bar. Uh, and I'm probably not saying it right, but it's called an op fair. Those little Italian car things. Oh, and they, uh -huh. They've turned it into a mini bar that they rent throughout the Seattle area, Northwest. And they, you know, people put whatever they want in it and serve out of it. It's a really cute little thing. Cute. Like so a when cocktail, they got that, like a cocktail feature of a right, cocktail event. bar. Yeah. So I said, you know, you guys really need to take the trailer back because I'm really not using it that much. So they did, but they just have never taken off my logo and my <laughs> phone number. And my daughter's like, yeah, mom, we're going to get that done. But so for now, you'll see me traveling around the Seattle area, probably. Yeah. It's your billboard. With, um, yeah, yeah. So well, that was, a, that was crazy. Um, but your name is, but Chrysanthemum is so distinctive and just, you know, it's a charming brand with the capital K-R-I-S too, which emphasizes your name, but has a, a little botanical twist to it. Uh, so obviously there's only one. It was one. really hard for me to get used to though. Oh. I really didn't like it because I, I would rather be, you know, behind the scenes here working and you interview somebody else. <laughs> Chris, that is turning out so beautiful. And um, you, uh, the grass is really um, just kind of enliven the whole thing. And I love Carl Forster grass. Um, it's so <clears throat> golden and in the landscape, it's got such a, like a columnar vibe. Right. And right. then the and other- a lot of other, and I don't know the exact names, but you know. Okay. So how are you adding the apple? I'm adding the apple in the middle. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to let it droop a little bit, but because I've got, you know, all this, uh, curly willow in the middle, that's what's my, you know, supporting. Sure. And I don't really want my apples to be, you know, hidden. I want them to be a little bit out there, but I don't want them to be there so much that it's like, yeah. Oh, you've got apples there. I would rather have them be a little bit more down inside. So you have to look inside right. to see what's here. That's, you know, right. and this is a local bundle of wheat that we have. We, you know, there's a lot of wheat farmers. And so we use wheat girls will bring me wheat from their dad's farm and we'll put it in, you know, arrangements, boutonnieres. It holds some sentimental value. Absolutely. You're making it so, so appropriate for the location and sunflowers do grow in your area, right? Right. Right. And yeah. I, you know, clearly should grow them, but you know, something has to give and it was, you, it's that. So. Well, it seems to me from the tour you gave us that most of the, what you have are perennials and shrubs and grasses, but not right. a ton of annuals, unless it's for the hanging baskets. Well, and you know, a couple of years ago I did raise um, zinnias and they did really, really well. And I just, this spring was crazy. And like I said, something's got to give and that's what it was. Yeah. And, but yeah. next year I will definitely get, like I said, we have a renter and his, the area over there, I'm going to turn into like where my zinnias will go and sunflowers. We get a lot of wind though. So I'm going to clearly put up like some T posts and hog wire <laughs> right. for the sunflowers to right. just kind of hold them. Um, I, it seemed I like, like it was very windy when you were doing the tour yesterday. But it felt great. It felt really yeah. good. Um, I do use a lot of leaves. They come from Florida. So they're for a farm there. Um, I like to twist them. Um, I think they add, you know, that's what I did with the, um, you know, the sedum the other night for the mm -hmm. fair things. Um, and so, I mean, even though they're from Florida, it's still, you know, yeah. a so, U.S. grown product. Um, so you folded it over and then wired it so it's a loop. Right. Yeah. I don't just, you know, yeah. So that's I don't know sweet. why. I just started doing this and. You know, I think it just adds a little punch, a little bit of, it finishes it off a design. And um, Well, and most people yeah. don't know what it is. So they're, they're just right. impressed. So. Oh, that's right. so pretty. Oh my gosh. And you added, it's interesting that the dark, the dark foliage and then the Echinops and then that Helenium kind of uh, balance all the lighter straw and golden components. Right. So, Well, and I'm, I almost feel guilty because I, you know, I'm clearly fortunate to be able to have this kind of access, you know? Yeah. But you know, this doesn't happen all year round, but I do use it when I can. So, you know, sometimes it, what I have and what I use will be more accent in the winter time. You know, we've got a, a ton of conifers and that is really fun to be able to use those. So does the olive and the uh, eucalyptus that are all in pots and you move them into the greenhouse, are you able to cut from that in the winter? Cause they don't ever drop oh, their leaves. I should have right? cut some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yes. Oh, I use it year round. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we keep the greenhouse, you know, just above freezing. But yeah, um, I use the olive branches in um, bridal bouquets. Girls yeah. love it. And oh I my love gosh. it too. Yeah. It's, it's, I, and I, I'm trying to be careful when I cut on it so it doesn't like totally distort it. But, you know, it just goes like crazy. So, yeah, that is um, something I clearly should have put in here. But I've well, got it, somebody that's Oh, no, no, that's it. okay. It clearly loves the heat in eastern Oregon. It's it's oh, it just does. that it can't survive outside of the greenhouse in the winter. Right, right. You know, and so we keep it just above freezing, and so it does really well. Well, listen, before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about your marketing and your branding. Okay. Um, when okay. when you... You want to move that a little bit to the right so we don't, you're not blocked by it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's okay. fair. Uh, we have to okay. see your face. Um, who else is uh, serving the wedding market? I mean, are there, do you have competition or are you just so um, different than a, a brick and mortar flower shop? Um, yes, I clearly am because I'm clearly custom. Nothing is sitting in my cooler made. So when you call, I make it. Um, we have, um, there's another flower shop in town that does a really great job, but it's a walk in. You know, she has um, other things, trinkets and, you know, candles and stuff like that that you can um, buy. But I clearly am a little bit more different. And then there's another flower shop. So there's two, three flower shops in town. Um, but I think, you know, there's the population is 20,000 people. Um, there's clearly room for all of us. We all have a little bit of a different aspect. And then, you know, there's the grocery store. So here is the olive branches. Oh, I love it. Oh, your, kind of, your friend went and got it for you. I love it. Yes, she did. And even Thank I you. have some with olives on it here. Oh. But, you know, before I thought it looked nice. But once you put this olive in, you know, seeing the gray underside of it, just really. And then oh, you love it. Eucalyptus from the gardens. And, um, yeah. So um, in terms of, you know, your population of 20,000, a couple other people right. also serving the wedding market, it seems like the if you start looking at the larger region with destination weddings, you have a much larger market then. Right. And, you know, tri City, so Pasco, Richland, Washington is, you know, like 40 miles away. So, you know, clearly they get a lot of that. But then we get a lot of brides who want to come here because of the gardens, you know, and usually I will do the flowers if there's a wedding here. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, you don't have to use me when you do the But gardens. why wouldn't they, right? Well, yeah, it just makes it easier for everybody, you so know. Right. So how approximately, I know COVID might have thrown this off, but how approximately how many weddings are you able to host every year? Okay. So <laughs> I have a wedding every weekend in the gardens from now till October 22nd. Oh my gosh. And, and then we start in May and I take two weeks off during fair and rodeo. So almost every weekend from May until the end of October. Wow. But then last year we had weddings in the greenhouse because of COVID and, you know, people, had booked for the summer outside had to risk make it smaller and they're at this point we just want to get married they could have 50 people in the greenhouse and we had a beautiful wedding in the greenhouse for 50 people like a micro wedding and i think brides have figured that out the ones mm -hmm. who have had the smaller weddings really enjoy them yeah wow so it's a it's a big part of your business being a venue Right, right. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of business meetings. You know, I'm president of the Chamber of Commerce this year. And throughout COVID, we've been meeting in the greenhouse or in the gardens just because we can be outside. You know, we can have space. Right. So, wow. And then when you have a wedding, um, you're, whoever the couple is, they're hiring a caterer and bringing in, do you provide all the chairs and sound system or do they yeah, have to rent we that? Have all chair, we have chairs, tables. We provide the sound system that's throughout the gardens. So they just log in with their iPhone. No, I do not do any catering. That is not my deal. Um, we don't have a kitchen. No, that's okay. That. That's someone else's yeah. job. <laughs> yes. We got to spread it around. Um, yeah. Well, Chris, talk a little bit about the radio spots you're doing. And, um, and maybe I think it'll inspire people to look at marketing um, well, you, you know, know kind of every, in a hybrid. Every class I've taken or everybody you listen to say that, oh, radio is your worst investment for, you know, doing ads. And so um, we're 20,000. You know, I know the people that are on the radio station. You know, we all work together to support the community, whether it's a fundraiser. I've got a fundraiser for a police officer that, you know, had an unfortunate health issue. You know, I'm donating flower arrangements for the centerpieces this weekend. You know, we all work together. It's a, it's a small community. So we do that for each other. So um, they approached me about doing some ads. And I would do different ads throughout the year, you know, when they had a really great price on something and just run it for a special. But then I decided that I'm going to do it every month. So I do four 30-second ads. 
but I don't do selling ads. They're more educational ads. What I'm using in the gardens, what's happening in the gardens, you know, where I'm going, what I'm making for flowers and bridal bouquets, um, you know, just educating people. And so it's not necessarily a selling ad. It's more of an informational, educate the people. And I've got a tremendous feedback from it. It's been great. Wow. It's almost like you're positioning yourself as the local gardening expert too, because you're talking about what's growing and, or, or, or do you not want to be in that position? Maybe your husband should do that. Yeah. He, <laughs> he clearly should be here and say those little, you know, throw out those botanical names and all this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, like last week's ad clearly was all about the fair and rodeo come out and support everybody. You know, the kids in 4-H have worked hard and long for their animals and support them in the sale. You know, that was my ad. I want to be a community partner. Wow. And I've been here for a long time. And for me, that amount of money every month is worth it. People hear it. They like it. They know I'm not trying to push something, you know, at them. But they, you know, I'll get Facebook messages. Where do I find this? Or how did you do that? Or, you know. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. And can you t give kind of what's the rough monthly budget for that sort of thing? Um, I'm, oh, I'm thinking it's like around six. I'm thinking I'm, I may, no, no, it's four. Sorry. It's four. Um, so I do, like I said, four 30 second ads and I record them myself. I have them down to 30 seconds. I go in, I sit at the radio station. I just record them and I'm out of there. <laughs> I don't like to do but it. But that's like a hundred dollars a week. And you think about how much people spend to boost things on Facebook very easily could get to a hundred dollars a week. So it's, it's a, right. it basically, I can, I, I mean, I'm just coaching you here because I, I want to support you. I can no, see fine. you saying, okay, well I get one, one additional new client a week or new order that's paid for itself. Right. right. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause my special orders aren't the, you know, the, the inexpensive orders, you know, the 999, 1099 floor arrangements, people that have been with me either through weddings or friends or ordered before or seeing me support a, you know, community function will call. And um, so my orders are probably higher price yeah. orders. Oh, for sure. And, and then as we kind of, you get through the end of the season, it sounds like you've got like eight or 10 more weddings. So you're not over yet. What, no. what happens uh, with chrysanthemums and Bennett Botanical Garden in the, like over the holidays? Um, you know, really, I mean, as far as usually our weather is fairly good. So Doug is out in the garden still working. I mean, he's pruning and cleaning and figuring where he's going to put something new or moving. Um, and the flowers, you know, just keep going. I mean, I, you know, I will harvest out of the gardens, like I said, conifers and those kinds of things. Um, and then I'll try and locally source mm -hmm. like through the Portland flower market, or I'm a member of the Seattle wholesale growers market too. Mm -hmm. So when I go visit my kids, I'll usually stop. There's a dahlia grower in the Tri-Cities that I get dahlias from. And then a friend of mine raises peonies you know, professional yeah. here. And so, you know, I try and do that. And so, I mean, I'm just as, it used to be pretty seasonal, but you're round now. I mean, wow. it's hard to get it's away. It's amazing. And are you asked to do um, like wreath workshops and that sort of thing in the greenhouse or? Usually, yeah, usually I do. I do a, a Thanksgiving, you know, like mm. centerpiece design, and then I'll do like a Christmas design and, you know, I'll change it up with whatever we use. Um, so if you've done it before, you won't have the same thing. We have holly so branch or holly plants, you know, bushes planted. And right. so I'll harvest those. Oh my gosh. It's so much going on. I love it. Yeah. Did you ever imagine your life was going to take this turn? And, and I just think it's so exciting that you've built a, a business that you can earn. You basically support yourself from your own property, your own garden. Right. No, I never would have imagined. It's just kind of, but I don't think we all really plan it. It just kind of happens. And, and it always hasn't been great and easy. I'll, I will be the first to tell you that. I mean, all you have to do is look at my hands. You know, I go to put boutonnieres on. I'm like, oh, I should have bleached these hands first or something. Right, you know? right, right. I mean, because it's just my husband and I who work in the gardens. And so, you know, a lot of it had been trial and error. Stuff has died. You know, things haven't done well. We've had to take them out. Um, you know, it's been hard, you know, the lawnmower breaks down, we've got a wedding, he's gone doing a landscape job. And it's like, you know, or like the guy here's Pepe dumping the septic tank this morning and he was gone and the guy couldn't get the lid off. I'm like, where are you at? You need to get back here. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of chaos, Yeah. but you know, it works. I mean, you know, yeah. I think if you, as long as you work hard at something you love doing, how could life be any better? Right. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, your arrangement is so beautiful. I, hope that you post a photo of it on Facebook or Instagram so we can uh, see it, you know, without the studio All behind this. it, but you know, just right. 
charming. And um, I hope there's someone lucky gets that in your life. Maybe a cl- maybe you'll get a phone call of someone who needs a centerpiece and you'll be like, yeah, I got that. Because you said you had six or seven orders on Monday morning alone. Right. And those were just calling and those weren't the pre-head orders. And, you know, some people may not think six or seven is many. But for me, where I make each one and I deliver each one, you know, I'm the one person here. There's nobody cleaning buckets but me or delivering but me. But I like that. I like being able to control quality. You know, if there's a problem, I want to be able to handle it and be able to answer. You know, yes, I did this or no, I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Great. And and I'm assuming that it's Wednesday and you're already thinking about this week weekend's wedding plus the, the charity thing you're doing. So, yeah. Summer right. is, yeah, and I guess I have to judge a watermelon spitting contest on Saturday. <laughs> and then, you know, so, I mean, there's lots of turning pieces. So, yeah. Well, how many more uh, weeks, months, or years are you um, the president of the Chamber of Commerce? Because I'm sure some of it comes with that hat, too. You're wearing that hat. Yeah, yeah. I'll be the president for a year. I was, you know. And then you're the after the post one for a year. Uh-huh. And, and we're, you know, we try and support local business and that's, you know, a process and it's been difficult and, you know, we all need to work together to do that as a community. We do. We do. And I mean, it's, that's how I feel about uh, our community and how, you know, interrelated we all are and, and uh, farmers right. need florists, florists need farmers. And it's just right. great to see um, how it's all come together at chrysanthemums and, Thank you for the visit to your studio and your beautiful gardens, Chris. I'm just, I can't wait to visit someday in person. I'm not that far away. There's no excuse. Yeah. Nope. That's fine. That would be great. Nope. We, we're usually always here. We usually take a vacation with all the kids, you know, grandkids, grandkids once every other year. And, you know, we all go somewhere and just try and chill and not think about a work, you know, but that's when things usually, you know, you get phone calls and where are you? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Well, you know, all my kids are kind of interrelated with agriculture. I mean, because we started out there. My son actually has a sod farm that he raises and sells sod locally here. And he's raised, you know, pinto beans and all that kind of stuff. And then my daughter and her husband, you know, helped with the name and, you know, all the marketing. And she did my logo and stuff. And then um, my son and his wife live in Michigan. And that's why when I thought I can see Joseph Massey and take a class from him and stay with the kids. Oh. And that's the same thing with the Ariella. She's our class. It was fairly close to the kids. So I just made a, you know, a double trip out of it. So it's, yeah, it's clearly life consuming. And I love that. I mean, although when winter comes, it's nice to sit down and put your feet up and watch, you know, I did the discovery channel and love watching Florette. Uh That to me is just so inspiring. She is so inspiring. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you can sometimes have to binge on things in the off season, just like how people binge on seed catalogs in the winter, but right. uh, Right. (laughs) And watching it over and over again is still I love watching him. Yeah, that's she's great. very inspirational. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your studio, your beautiful gardens, and uh, being a live guest on the Slow Flower Show. It, I'm going to mention a few uh, show notes at the end, but I will say goodbye. And okay. um, when we post the show notes, I'll make sure everyone knows how to find and follow you. Okay, great. Thank you thank so much, you. Deborah. Take care. Mm-hmm. Have a great day. Mm-hmm. Take care, you Chris. Too. Bye-bye. Wow, that was awesome. I'm so glad that we got to have a sneak peek into Chris's world and um, see her design something that was using most everything from her own garden. So I will have more photos of Chris's work and um, maybe a photo of that bouquet in our show notes at DeborahPrincing.com next week. And before we wrap up, I'd like to share some sponsor thank yous. Um, Thank you to our lead sponsor for 2021, Farm Girl Flowers. Farm Girl Flowers delivers iconic burlap wrap bouquets and lush abundant arrangements to customers across the U.S., supporting more than 20 U.S. flower farms by purchasing more than $9 million of U.S. grown fresh and seasonal flowers and foliage annually. You can learn more at farmgrowflowers.com. We want to thank Mayesh Wholesale Florist, family owned since 1978. Mayesh is the premier wedding and event supplier in the U.S., We're thrilled to partner with them to promote local and domestic flowers, which they source from farms large and small around the U.S. You can learn more at mayesh.com. Thank you to the Gardener's Workshop, which offers a full curriculum of online education for flower farmers and farmer florists. Online education is more important this year than ever, and you'll want to check out the course offerings at 
thegardenersworkshop.com. And thank you to Rody. This is a new sponsor. They are an on-demand delivery company offering affordable same-day and scheduled deliveries with a network of friendly local drivers who handle each delivery with care and one-on-one support from a designated account manager, Rody guarantees a smooth and reliable delivery experience from pickup to delivery. And with no contract commitment, you only pay for what you need when you need it. Sign up for your first delivery at rody.com slash slowflowers and use the promo code slowflowers. That's one word to get $5 off. Thanks so much for joining me today. As our movement gains more supporters and more passionate participants who believe in the importance of our domestic cut flower industry, the momentum is contagious. I know you feel it too. I value your support and I invite you to show your thanks to support Slow Flower's ongoing advocacy, education, and outreach activities. You can find the donate button in the column to the right at deborahprinzing.com. I'm Deborah Prinzing, host and producer of The Slow Flowers Show. Next week, you're invited to join me in putting more slow flowers on the table, one stem, one vase at a time. The content and opinions ex- uh, expressed here are either mine alone or those of my guests alone, independent of any podcast sponsor or other person, company, or organization. The Slow Flowers podcast is engineered and edited by Andrew Brenlin. The Slow Flowers show is relying on a lot of help from Andrew, and I thank him for helping me set up the new video podcast platform and teaching me the technology. I'll be relying more on his talents in the coming days. You can learn more about Andrew's work at soundbodymovement.com. And thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you next week, and um, I can't wait to share more flowers with you. Take care.